There are usually urban animals doing interesting things everywhere, all the time. And uh, it, it actually enriches my life to be able to see them doing it. I decided to write The Field Guide to Urban Wildlife um, because um, I, I had this compelling desire to share things that I know about animals that I know are interesting and I know are not, not very widely known. And so, you know, in, in, some, in some sense I had like this burning desire to, to share secrets. For every animal that seems to be conventional, there's an entire life story that goes with it. And if you can't find something that is really interesting in that life story, then you are, you're not looking. The Field Guide to Urban Wildlife is a collection of natural history essays that tell some of the secret, little known facts about common animals that live in cities and suburbs. The ladybug has a little tiny uh, larva that looks like a miniature alligator. And if you know to look for this, if someone just shows you a picture once, you'll find them all over the place in the summertime. Pigeons. It descended from birds that lived in cliffs. And so I think pigeons are comfortable in cities because they have an ancestral memory of this. If you go and stand uh, by the Wall Street Stock Exchange and look up you, it's where you were in a canyon, and I think that the pigeons also feel this way. A lot of uh, animals have an easy life, uh, a much easier life by living in the city because there's a continuous supply of food. They don't have to search for it, they just like, go to where the trash can is in the morning and uh, there's shelter. Uh, if they're just a little bit clever about it, and they are, uh, they, they can f find a place to live. If, you, if you're ready to, to look at the animals, you're ready, and if you're not, nothing I say is going to make you look at them. But if you knew that the water striders in the ponds, you know those little things that skid along the top of the water? If you knew that they were communicating with each other by banging their feet, you would take a closer look. Central Park is one of the best places to go in the city to watch wildlife. Although, if you keep your eyes open, you will see things everywhere. But Central Park has a, a, the advantage of being a green space in a, an otherwise like continuous sea of concrete in all directions for many miles. And so that makes it particularly good for bird migration in, in, the, um, in the spring and the fall. The birds who are passing up the, or down the Atlantic Flyway all get sort of concentrated into that, into that spot. I have been at the Museum of Natural History for almost 14 years, and I've been in my current position for about five. I am the collections manager of the Ambrose Monell Collection for Molecular Microbial Research. This uh, collection is an archive of frozen animal biopsy specimens from all over the world. Um, we have small samples because they're used mainly for genetic analysis and for evolutionary biology, for conservation genetics. I'm a PhD student at uh, City College of New York working uh, in the lab of Dr. Amy Burkhoff. I am sequencing the DNA of populations of butterflies from the different um, forest types in Costa Rica, comparing those to butterflies in, uh, the, in North America. And I hope to be able to say uh, something about what uh, the changes in their DNA mutation patterns say about the history of the changes of their populations. I think that if people who, who don't know anything about animals can find something in this book that's going to make them say, oh my God, you know, I never thought such a thing was possible.